first, congratulations on Thank being you. the youngest speaker here and finishing your speech. I know that you were really relieved yes. at the end. <laughs> so I had the first question I had for you, you mentioned that after the Lincoln-Douglas debate at the City Club, that was when you really wanted to get into the meat of your father's story. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? What was, why was that the moment that you really wanted to get to your father's story as opposed to before? Mm -hmm. Well, I, it was actually before the debate itself. It was um, a month ago uh, before the, the actual debate at the City Club that I had already started researching the case. And it was um, a resolution specifically about human rights abuses. And so through my research, I found out that there's a lot of literature on the human rights abuse in China and the human rights abuse issue in China. And um, as I did more research, I learned about the China Aid Association. And I realized that there is this guy, Mr. Bob Fu, who is dedicating himself, his life, his organization, everybody that works in the organization to fighting to secure human rights and religious freedom. And that made me really hopeful. And I felt like at that point, that's when I was 16 at the time when I started researching this topic. I felt like I was intellectually and emotionally ready to start digging in. And I felt like when I was younger, um, I didn't really know too much about the situation in China. I knew that it had a personal connection, but that wasn't enough. And through this debate resolution, I realized that this whole China human rights issue isn't just about my father. It's not just about me. It's not even about the thousands of other political prisoners. It's really about respecting those values that have intrinsic worth, um, respecting the values for which our country stands. Okay. And so for fighting, like pursuing that, and, mm -hmm. and um, I'm assuming you're going to study some sort of political science at Princeton or Probably. something um, something along those lines. After that, uh, where, do, where do you see yourself going and what do you see yourself doing? This is going to be really vague and broad, but definitely something related to public service. Um, because I, you know, I'm in a situation where I have a personal connection to this issue, but I've also realized that that's where I intellectually um, do best in. That's the field I do best in as well. And um, I also have a passion for this field. So with all three um, factors coming into play, I know that whatever I do in the future, it's going to be related to the human rights issue in China, it's going to be related to public service, and more importantly, it's going to be related to giving back to the community that's rescued me, raised me, and educated me, and made me who I am. And speaking of that community, obviously the theme here is import and export. Mm -hmm. What do you see in the community that you think, and it could just be one thing, two mm -hmm. things, that, that could be imported into the community from your own experience in the past, and what could this community export? say it, it was to China or Vietnam or wherever wherever else? Um, well, I think when I started this journey, I realized that um, this is a topic that's not really talked about. Only after you do intense digging online do you really start reading about the human rights abuse in China. What I hear about in the news, on TV, um, on the radio, is a lot of information about China's economy and how it's the world's second largest economy. It's a major trading partner with the United States and how China is going to play a major role in determining the fate of the 19th century, of the, of the 21st century. <laughs> um, but what I don't hear so much on the radio, on TV, and in news articles is what it means to play a major role in the international um, arena, um, what it means to speak the language of human rights, what it means to have that common platform from which other discussions of economics can meaningfully develop. So I think, um, I think any way we can to encourage um, discussions on human rights in China, and this is not just something that's unique to Cleveland, I think this is a, more or less a national issue, um, uh, I think that would really help, just raising awareness. So that's what I've been trying to do. And then, so you're doing that. What can individuals like myself or Kyrie or Mike, what can we do Mm -hmm. to further that discussion and further mm -hmm. further those goals? Well, the China Aid Association, um, and along with other NGOs, has launched the Free China 18 campaign. And if you go online and, and you look at that, there are, on the website, there are bios about um, all 18 of those dissidents. And they, um, and that website, has very you know clear instructions on what to do to help that cause. But more specifically, um, I know parents of classmates at school, they've been writing to the, the Senator Sherrod Brown, they've been writing to congressmen. Um, and, and though these these letters may not have an immediately um, big impact and you know my father won't be released tomorrow or anything, 
that expresses their belief that human rights are worth fighting for. I think any action, any letter, any time we speak up about it, even in conversation, um, when this issue comes up, we don't just talk about the economics part, but we also talk about the human rights part. I think that's really, really important. That, and that means so much for to, to the people that are personally affected by it. Yeah, fantastic. Again, looking at Twitter, everybody else was as imp uh, impressed and inspired by your story as we were. So thank you very much thank and you. congratulations. Thank you.